Hi there, my name is Stephen and I work for KPMG. I'm really excited to be involved with the KPMG Children's Book Awards this year and I'm also really looking forward to telling you a bit about the book that I've reviewed and doing a couple of activities that will hopefully help you as a junior juror make some great decisions. So over the past few days I've been reading this book, um, The Falling in Love Montage by Kira Smith. And it really is a fantastic book and I've really enjoyed reading it and I highly recommend you guys check it out if you haven't read it already. Um, so in the book we meet our main character, Saoirse. Sorry, that's her there. Um, and Saoirse has just finished her leaving sir and she's on track to go to Oxford. However, she's uncertain if she wants to take that path because of all the stuff that she has happening at home. Um, so for instance, her mother suffers from early onset dementia. Uh, her father has just gotten a new girlfriend called Beth and we're gonna talk about her um, just, in the, just in a minute. And Saoirse herself is also going through a really rough kind of breakup period um, where she feels that she, because of this breakup she's had, she's isolated from all of her friends. So she's in this kind of um, self-destructive spiral um, until she meets Ruby and Ruby is kind of new in town and they kick off this, this kind of summer romance based on the idea of a falling in love montage from a rom-com. Uh, so yeah, it's a really interesting premise and it's actually really well executed as well. But now we're going to talk about one of the most pivotal scenes of the book. One of the pivotal scenes in this book is when Saoirse and Saoirse's father host the dinner party. And at the dinner party we've got uh, Ruby and Beth. So just in case you forgot, Beth is Saoirse's father's new girlfriend. Uh, and it's a really interesting turning point in the book because I think it's at this point where Saoirse starts to gain a little bit of respect for Beth rather than seeing her as this evil presence who's going to, you know, sweep her dad away and step into her mum's shoes. Um, and a lot of that comes out of a conversation that we have with Beth and Ruby at the dinner table where, you know, um, Ruby's asking Beth what she does and Beth explains that she's into ethical advertising and in the book um, what this means is she runs campaigns, like advertising campaigns, that are non-sexist and there's a really, really good example um, of one of those campaigns in the book but I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't want to spoil it for you but it leads us really nicely into one of the activities that we have to do What we're going to do is we're going to look at the influence of the patriarchy in advertising and the way we're going to do that is we're going to look at some ads I'm going to tell you a bit about what I think of them in terms of the influence of the patriarchy we're going to take a look at some really bad ones and we're going to try and find some, some ones that Beth would approve of as well. The most important thing here is that we just get this conversation started. So without further ado, let's take a look at some advertisements. Laundry is not new. Your mother, your grandmother, her mother, they all did the laundry. Maybe even a man or two. And although a lot has changed, the machines, the detergents, the clothes themselves, one thing has not. The bleach most trusted to keep whites pure white is still Clorox bleach. Okay, let's talk about Clorox. So, in my opinion, very sexist ad. Look, I mean, it's the message is clear here. The women do the cleaning. Um, in terms of sexist advertising, this is, this is definitely one of them, guys. What would Beth think? I think Beth would probably give this one a pretty big thumbs down, so that's what I'm going to do as well. Shame on you, Clorox. Let's take a look at the next one. Yeah, just your typical Super Bowl car ad. Right? Or a hilarious beer ad. <laughs> or whatever ad this is. Whatever. But it's a Tide ad. What? It's a Tide ad. What makes it a tie ad? There are no stains. Look at those clean clothes. What else would this be an ad for? Diamonds? A gift that lasts for a no. Tide. It's time for a cold refresh. No. <laughs> tie dad. Fall into the sleep of no. you. No. Tide. No. Tie dad. Extreme. No. Tide. Tide! Meet the all new. No, it's a tie dad. Tide. So, does this make every Super Bowl ad a tie dad? I think it does. Watch and see. Very good. Okay, Tide. This is the 2018 Super Bowl commercial for Tide. Is it sexist though? Is it in line with the patriarchy's influence? I'm gonna say no. It's a cleaning product like Clorox. It's not selling Tide the same way that Clorox did it, which was Clorox where like all of the users of Clorox are gonna be women because women do the cleaning. And the Tide commercial focuses more on the kind of outcome and it does it in a really funny and smart way. 
there are no women doing the cleaning here. In fact, if anything, you know, it's the guy from Stranger Things who looks like he may, may be more involved with the cleaning. Um, so uh, yeah, I'd say it's a really good ad. I wouldn't say it's sexist. I, I'll give this one a thumbs up. Um, I'd like to hear what you guys think about it. Thumbs up for me. Let's take a look at the next one. My wife's incredible. She took care of the baby all day, cooked a great dinner, and even went to a school meeting. And look at her. She looks better than any of her friends. She takes care of herself, gets her rest, does her sit-ups, watches her diet, and to make sure she gets enough iron and vitamins, she takes Geritol every morning. Makes me take it, too. More than twice the iron of ordinary supplements, plus seven vitamins. Take care of yourself. Take Geritol. My wife. I think I'll keep her. Oh, that wasn't good. That wasn't good at all. Um, this is the patriarchy in a nutshell in advertising. It's an old ad for sure. Just goes to show hopefully how much our views have changed since back then. This is just the, the man, you know, owning the woman and it's just not acceptable. So that's a thumbs down for me. I imagine I imagine Beth from, from the book would be pretty horrified by this as well. So uh, yeah, thumbs down. Let's take a look at another one. Can you be an athlete? You pregnant you a mother that depends what is an athlete someone who moves sounds like you someone who gets it done no matter what you do that someone who listens to her body also you someone who defies gravity you Someone who deals with the pain, hits her limit, and pushes past it. Pushing, pushing, pushing. Someone who earns every single win. You, you, you. So, can you be an athlete? If you aren't, no one is. So originally I chose to look at sports advertisements because I talked to my, my little sisters and they said that um, patriarchal advertising is endemic in the sports industry. So I thought I'd pick this one because it's a bit different. I'd say this is a pretty good ad. Um, I don't think it's sexist. I don't think it is, you know, really, um, I don't think there's an influence from the patriarchy in here uh, either. So yeah, well done, Mike. Um, that was a really good one. So maybe let's take a look at, at one more and then we'll close it out. A very close call. Could have gone either way. It was right on the line. Now Ferguson's not too happy with it, I can tell you that much. Oh, he's beating him like a rented mule. <laughs> and the ref's just tuning him out. Boy, where do you train to take a beating like that? He said, when's that porch gonna get painted? And that litter box! It's been three weeks! Three weeks! And to think I could have married Don Hoffman! And would it hurt for you to say that you love me once in a while? Okay, so that was the Budweiser tune out ad from 2004. So, was it sexist? Yes, uh, I think so for sure. Um, we have this referee here who's, who's taking a licking from, I assume, the team coach. And uh, the, the commentators are wondering where he's got the skills to do that from. And it turns out his, his wife has been nagging him. Typical uh, patriarchy narrative. Um, typical kind of, you know, the woman of the house is, is nagging the man of the house over doing his chores. Not acceptable. Not a good ad. I think that Beth from the book here and our, our kind of strong female cast as well definitely would not approve. That's a thumbs down from me, Budweiser. No thank you very much. So that's five, five ads. Three of them that are pretty sexist. Thankfully no longer on our screens. Two of them that were um, pretty clever and didn't rely on the influence of the patriarchy at all. Uh, so as junior jurors, I think you guys have to do the same thing. So um, yeah, maybe tr maybe when you're watching TV, ask yourself about um, the influence of the patriarchy. Is it involved in this ad? Can you see traditional gender roles being propagated or sold through the ad itself? Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this exercise. I hope that you enjoy giving it a shot as well. Um, best of luck in choosing the, the, the winner of the Children's Book Awards. I will give my recommendation to the Falling in Love montage. Really enjoyed reading it. Um, best of luck to all of you and take care and stay safe.